Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of joy, Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Well, friends, today is October the 30th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, we have been doing a review in the life of Job through the book of Job, but I need to pause on this video today because the Lord has laid a burden upon my heart that needs to be addressed. You see, the heart of this ministry is about holiness as a lifestyle, a way of life. And holiness means to keep oneself pure. It comes from the Hebrew word, which simply means to live a separated life separated from the world that we live in. Now, if you will go in your mind back to the days of Jesus, you will see a time where there was no electricity, there was no technology, and there were none of the things that we have available to us today. And so often in this ministry, we try to point those things out, and they may come across wrong or misunderstood. And so allow me to pose it to you in a couple of different examples. When we think of separating ourselves from the world, what do we think of? Well, we must think about the things that the world offers unto us. Many of these things come as forms of pleasure. Now, again, the things we have available to us today, they didn't have back then. Now, I'm speaking mainly of technology, television, radio, internet, the printing press, which has brought us books and magazines. But all we must do in order to answer the question, what does the world provide us and from what are we to separate ourselves from, is to simply ask an honest question, being transparent and true to ourselves, not allowing ourselves to justify our answers, and we simply need to ask, do these things come from the kingdom, from a pure and holy God? Does alcohol, drugs, pornography, gambling, rock and roll, country, rap. Do you think, I mean, can you honestly answer that these things come from the kingdom of a pure and holy God? Of course not. Yet many of us battle every day with these things because we like them, we enjoy them. And so we find the burden too hard to bear to separate ourselves from those things. But Jesus never said that it would be easy. He simply said that he would help us bear that burden. And the Bible is so clear in James chapter 4, verse 4, we are told that anyone who loves attaches themselves, finds entertainment and enjoyment from these things, is an enemy of God. That is the plain truth, friend. And yet so many think that they can live these lifestyles and still receive the blessing and joy that comes with knowing God. And yet the Bible says if you partake in such things, you are his enemy. Jesus said we must take up our cross. A cross is a heavy thing to bear, friends. It wasn't easy for him, and it won't be easy for you. But how much are you committed in your relationship with him and to your allegiance unto him? Because your actions speak louder than words. Now, the second thing that I'd like to point out this morning is that when a question is posed unto me, either by a viewer or someone that I'm working with and counseling with, even locally, in the place that I live, I always, as should you and any good follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, refer to the Holy Word of God. And so any answer I give is going to come from the Word of God, not my opinion, not my experiences but only the holy inspired word of God. Now, what does that tell us? That simply tells us this. All the answers to the questions that we have are found in the Bible. And so to say what I mean, to mean what I say, and to say it without being mean, this is the crux of the matter. Many people would not be enduring the hardships that they're enduring, speaking specifically of the confusion that they live in each and every day of their lives, they would surely not have many of the unanswered questions if they would only read their Bibles. 
Because if we as teachers of the Bible refer to the Bible to answer all of life's questions, then everyone who has a question about the Bible, they would receive answers if they would only read their Bibles. Now, as we are approaching the end of October, moving into the month of November, this would be a great time for you to start if you're not doing that. And as I've told you in the past, if you will read five chapters of the Bible a day, you will read the entire New Testament every month. And you cannot imagine how this will change your life. As you read, you will see that there are things that you have been told, but the Bible speaks differently to. And so you must forego what you have been told and listen to the Bible. As you read, the Holy Spirit will shine a light across your heart, revealing things to you that must be confessed, acknowledged, and repented of. As you read, you will see the bar being set very high that you are to strive to reach. And you will be given wisdom and strength to reach that mark. And as you read and obey what you read, you will see your life transformed from the inside out by the Almighty. And so friends, I cannot encourage you enough. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of reading God's word every single day of your life. I mean, let me ask you this question. We're approaching the end of the year 2017. Have you read the New Testament in its entirety one time this year? Why not? How many movies have you watched? How much music have you listened to? How many hours have you spent with your friends and family? Jesus said, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We are commanded by scripture to, from the moment that we arise to the moment that we lay our heads down to go to sleep, that the only thing to be upon our minds, our hearts, and our mouth is the word of God. We're to ponder it. We're to meditate upon it. We're to study it. We're to obey it. We're to live it. We're to tell others about it and teach it. Our minds are not to be upon the weather, sports, politics, or what the latest news is in Hollywood. Our minds are to be upon the kingdom, the God whom we serve, and his holy word which he has given us to rule our lives by and to conduct ourselves. You see, friends, there are so many that are playing games with God. You might be one of them. But the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 3 that there is a danger in being lukewarm, not in being cold, in absolute rebellion and rejection to the God that we serve, and not being hot, absolutely on fire for Jesus, but the danger comes in being lukewarm. And did you know that the Bible says that that makes God sick? That he literally wants to vomit you out of his mouth? And yet the message being taught by many today is that God loves you in the condition that you're in. Well, ask yourself the simple question, if God loves you in the condition that you're in, in your acts of disobedience to his commands, then why does he want to vomit you out of his mouth? You see, God does not love the sinner. God offers his love unto the sinner. He offers his forgiveness unto the sinner. But the sinner must come in obedience and surrender in order to receive that love in order to receive that forgiveness. So it's time that we stop deceiving ourselves, lying to ourselves, thinking that we're okay when we're not. It's time that we get serious with God. We get back to repentance. We get back to confession. We get back to transparency. And we allow the Almighty to do the work in us that he so longs to do. So friends, when you face life's many temptations, ask yourself the simple question, does this come from the hand of God? And if you were to be honest with yourself, most of the things that we allow into our lives, we would have to answer no. Then take the step as a faithful follower of the Lord Jesus, abandon that thing, forsake it, sacrifice it, and live a surrendered life before him. And last but not least, spend every moment of your day in the things of God, Read your Bible, study your Bible, listen to good truth, 
good teaching, not things that cater to your ear and that bring you joy in what you hear, but search out teachers that are not afraid to rebuke you, to chasten you, to challenge you. Allow the word of God and his people to offend you. Because if you're not being offended by the word of God, then you're doing something wrong and you're listening to the wrong people. Well, I truly love you, friends. I care about your walk with Jesus. I know from the word of God what it takes to inherit the kingdom. I want you to be there. But if you're going to be there, then you must bear the burden of your cross. You must listen to and follow all the commands of the Lord Jesus given to us through his holy word from Genesis to Revelation. And you must become an enemy of this world as opposed to to an enemy of God. Now, as he wills and until tomorrow, friends, I love you and I'll see you on the next video.